PS 503 Unit 2 Applied Learning Archive Task 3 Part A Why does Charlotte Keatley employ the specific strategies I identified in Advanced Learning Archive Task 1? Um, looking at those strategies the speech is received by the audience as naturalistic, but everyday speech is compressed and the drama heightened. All right, mother. And what have you been doing, darling? I broke a cup and then we broke two jam jars. Oh, dear. Jackie's been an angel. Have the yellow one with the smarty. Looking at why, well, this style of speech is more engaging for an audience and it draws them into the production. Almost everything mentioned is relevant to the play. It is distilled speech. Nursery rhymes, fragmented speech. My mother said I never should play with the gypsies in the wood. If I did, she would say, Naughty girl to disobey. Why? Well, this defines the anachronistic moment of the four main characters as children. It sets the atmosphere for the scene and the rhymes are playful and yet haunting. Serious issues are disguised in rhyme. Mimicry of adult speech by the children. Mum's got the curse. Maybe we did it. What curse? The curse. Oh, yes. How do you know she's got it? You can tell. How? Why? Well, humour, but also to show how the characters have shifted as they have grown up. The dialogue between the children is playful, but touches on taboo subjects like killing a parent and sex. This provides a contrast in the pace and style to the adult scenes, and it's a moment of relief for the audience. Clichés. How dare you? You're at the centre of everything I do. Mummy treated me as though I'd simply fallen over and cut my knee, picked me up and said, you'll be all right now. It won't show much. She wanted to make it all better. Why? Well, it's purposely used cliches like a costume of language. They are words that people fall back on when they're finding it difficult to express themselves. And this could be because the emotions are too difficult or because it's a taboo subject or a sensitive subject. Maybe they just don't have the right vocabulary to say what they need to say. Strange words. I'd buy a baseball jacket instead of this yucky anorak. Why? To provide a touch of humour and quirkiness, to tickle the ear, to engage the audience, to provide a contrast to other more serious language and to provide texture, tone, interest and colour. Monologues. It's my birthday today. And it's all gone wrong already. I'm going to bury you, Suki. Eight is too old for dolls. I want a Sex Pistols t-shirt. Some hope. Unless Jackie brings me one. I'd have buried you ages and ages ago, Suki, if you hadn't been mum's. Why? used to give a deeper understanding of a character so their motivation is understood or as a device to move the plot along. Every character in the play has her own monologue. This one by Rosie is used to indicate that it's Rosie's birthday, to show that she is starting to rebel, to explain why she is burying the doll and to reveal that she has control over her own body and her boundaries. 
pauses, silence. What is it, dear? It's Ken, isn't it? He's not been made redundant. I don't know. Why? To indicate a difficult conversation, searching for the right words for a sensitive subject. Dialect. Well, I may be as old as the Queen Mother, but I buy all my smalls in Topshop. Why? To give the audience background information on where it's likely the characters were brought up. Use of the word smalls is the word a northern woman would use for underwear. Old fashioned speech. Put your night dress on. Why? To give the audience more background information about the characters so there is an understanding about their age and the time they were brought up in, where language is more formal. Nightdress is an old fashioned word. Certain issues aren't discussed, such as sex and pregnancy out of wedlock. Also, to inject humour, contrasting different vocabularies and speech patterns. What do you think of the way that language is used in the play tells us about the playwright's world view? Charlotte Keatley's worldview is through the eyes and ears of a woman who has observed other women and retained their stories and information. They have resonated with her own experience of the world from her position as a woman trying to make choices about career, family and time. Through being a playwright, she's also tried to change the world, not just through her words and the story being played to the audience, but by purposely creating fully rounded female characters for women to play. Um, she says herself in an interview with a theatre company that this play comes out of watching the new opportunities and pressures on women, which I saw in the 1970s and 80s. Um, and she also says... I'm not called a woman playwright nowadays, but a playwright. And um, she also says, there are so many conventions about theatre, still those defined by a male point of view, such as what subjects or characters define good plays. Um, this is a small list of my references. And this is my reflection. I thought carefully about how to communicate this piece when I was writing about what the speech revealed. And I remembered that we're not analysing speech on the page, but speech in the context of a theatre performance. It became necessary for the lines to be heard rather than just seen. I included photos of lines as a reference to illustrate the point, but I have presented the answer as a video with my voice to demonstrate the spoken lines with life in them rather than dead on the page. Although the information is now distilled, I did do background reading and research and revised the language section of TS 403 Unit 2. I could have chosen to work more quickly and intuitively, but I want to understand and process what I'm doing. Thank you for looking at my video and for listening.